conformity or liberty in life? Are we conformed to forces that we don't understand, subjected to them, or are we truly free as people? That's the issue here. But look at this verse. It is really very remarkable. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Two key words, conformed, transformed conformed. The Greek actually hints at the adoption of an outward pose, such as an actor may adopt. The idea is, be not pressed into shape at an outward level by this world, but be transformed in your mind, transformed through and through. Conformed refers to your outward appearance, and your inside is unchanged, unreformed, unimproved. Don't be just conformed into the mold, the image of this age, this present society, but be transformed more deeply so that you can be made a different person, a better person, from your mind outward to your outer self. So are we conformed? Of course we are. Everyone is. Before Christian conversion, whether we know it or not, we are fashioned into the desires and into the ways of this present world. We're molded. Though the word doesn't actually speak of this, the Greek word, it is used to describe also the molding of something into a shape. Is that what happens to us as we live in this world? This world, it's personified in Paul's language, this present age, it takes something malleable, something plastic, that's us. And it molds us and shapes us, rather as a potter does with the clay. He takes the clay, he shapes it, and then, of course, he bakes it so that it becomes fixed in that shape. And that's what the world does to us. It fashions us, molds us, shapes us how it wants us. And then it makes us hard and brittle so that we cannot change out of that shape and we cannot improve our character. This isn't very complimentary to human beings. The Apostle Paul effectively says, you are malleable. You're easy to shape and to change. You, you don't know it, but you are. We think we're strong and independent characters and personalities. We're not. We're being shaped all the time into the mold of society around us. We're soon set in our thoughts, the way we think, in our ways, in our behavior. The world, society, cannot make me a better person or you a better person. All it makes us, if we're liars, it makes us worse liars. If we're lusting, foul-minded people, it makes us worse. It eggs us on. It presses us into a mold of those people who have no time for God and who are against him. So we're like peas in a pod. People follow the fashion of the age and they're molded by it. And they think, oh, I'm original, I'm different. I believe what I want to believe. I have my own ideas. But actually people are all in this mold, under this influence. It's rather years and years ago, I remember visiting a car factory and seeing the shell of the car, the metal parts stamped out on giant presses. And that's us. It's as though the world is a great press and it stamps us into the shape it wants us. And actually, we are happy to be stamped. Conformed to this age, your potential has been crushed. It's been torn away from you. Your potential to know the Lord, to walk with him, to be in communion with him, to be used by him, to have light and understanding of him, to know him and to enjoy him. Your potential as a soul has been ripped away from you and you've been conformed and forced down to, into a godless stratum and order. We must repent before God. We must believe in Christ and depend upon him. We must give him our poor sinful lives, hand them over, so that he, by the power of the Spirit, can work in us that great transformation and we shall know him 
and love him and walk with him. Oh, that must happen or you'll die conformed, bludgeoned into the shape of the world and eternally condemned. What a saviour we have. Just think of it as we close. He was ready to come. He was ready to suffer and to die in an agony that is beyond human description, taking every punishment, every stroke that we deserved out of his love for lost sinners. Seek the Lord and turn to him while you can.